the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, here with another edition of the genuine article, and I'm sitting with Dr. Benjamin Sirica, who's the, the uh, one of the members of the Timmy study group and uh, also a consultant cardiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And we're talking about the Merlin trial and a recent paper that resulted from that trial. And Jack, can you refresh my memory about the Merlin trial? Definitely. The Merlin trial was a trial of moderate to high risk patients with non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. We ended up enrolling 6,560 patients followed them for a year, and they were randomized either to the antianginal agent renolazine, which was started in hospital, or placebo. And the primary endpoint was uh, cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, or recurrent ischemia. And we've showed the results of the primary analysis from about a year and a half ago, but what we have uh, just coming out in Jack is the analysis of the patients who had prior angina before they actually were admitted with, um, with their non-ST elevation ACS. And it takes up about half of the patient population had a history of prior angina. Good. So, so in this report in Jack, you're really dealing with just those people who had prior angina and then were admitted with ACS. And what was your endpoint in this trial? We used the same endpoint of the primary endpoint of cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, and recurrent ischemia. But we also looked at other metrics of uh, recurrent angina, either the use or need for further intensification of anti-anginal therapy. Um, we looked at worsening cardiovascular uh, angina classification. And we also did uh, had a stress test at eight months in these patients. So we looked at um, time to ST depression, time to symptom onset of their angina during these. And so these were the additional analysis on top of, uh, of the primary clinical outcomes. Right. So these patients are, are matched prospectively, uh, the difference being the intervention of renolazine. So what did you find? So we found that very consistent with the overall results, um, renolazine did not uh, reduce either death or myocardial infarction compared to placebo. But there was a statistically significant almost 30% reduction in the risk of recurrent angina with treatment with renolazine in patients who had chronic angina uh, before they were admitted for their, for their ACS. And we saw that was consistent regardless of the type of ischemia. So whether it was worsening of uh, Canadian cardiovascular class, there was an improvement with renolazine. Whether it was hospitalization with unstable angina or with EKG changes, there was a similar reduction with renolazine. There was also, as consistent with the prior studies of renolazine in patients with chronic angina, there was a uh, uh, um, uh, improvement in their exercise test performance with longer duration until their symptom onsets, longer duration total of exercise, and longer duration until they had ST depression on the EKG in the stress lab if they were treated with renolazine. That's pretty impressive improvement of anginal status. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you converted that in, into recommendations for, for the treatment of angina? Well, I think we're very uh, cognizant and uh, we are giving further data to support what are the guidelines that there really are two goals in the treatment of patients with chronic angina. One is to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death and new myocardial infarction. And renolazine doesn't seem to have a, a role in that area. But the other important goal is to improve symptoms. And still, a lot of patients with chronic angina have persistent symptoms symptoms, even if they're on two or three anti-anginal agents. And I think in this very broad population of patients with chronic angina, we show that renolazine is an effective anti-anginal agent, has a good safety profile, and uh, offers everybody another option to treat patients with chronic angina, especially if they've had an ACS um, in the preceding year or so. Yeah, have you gotten a bit more aggressive with your ACS patients? Uh, are you giving them renolazine uh, even if they haven't proven to have refractory angina? No, I'm still using uh, renolazine uh, as an anti-anginal agent. Um, I think this study has highlighted the fact that a lot of patients who come in with non-ST elevation ACS have a lot of chronic coronary disease. Uh, have persistent angina. Um, sometimes their life is limited by their angina and they're not actually that good at telling me about it until I push them. And so to really become more aggressive on reducing their anginal 
symptoms um, with any of the anti-angel agents, but I think this gives us more information and, and confidence that renolazine can be an effective part of that uh, medication regimen. Well, that's good information to have because I, I think you really have hit on an important point. That is that many of our coronary disease patients still do have angina, and we haven't found the perfect solution to that. And uh, a new drug like renolazine can help. Thanks very much for being with us, and thank you for watching.